first day here in Dubai. Today's plan is going to Dubai Expo 2020. I, I know it's 2022, but the 2020 Expo never happened because of COVID. So this one is called 2000. Anyway, it's called Dubai Expo 2020. There's so many things going on over there, including a lot of food. But before that, it's about eight o'clock in the morning right now and I'm starving. I heard this hotel has an amazing breakfast buffet. Let's go check it out. So this buffet is so cool. There's a waiting area where they give you snacks and refreshments, fruits. You can sit on these couches. It's a pre-buffet buffet. Buffet looks nice. You get to sit outside. Let me show you what's inside. It looks pretty cool. This place looks really, 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 really good. Got a bunch of uh, a bunch of breakfast items: some shakshuka, some falafels, tahini, some of this bread. Tahini is good, but that's a thick bread. Shakshuka looks good. Hmm. Shakshuka is definitely best on this place so far. And this is some uh, fowl medame. Food I say, it's not bad, nothing too spectacular. They do give you a bunch of juice, including watermelon juice, cheese, and honestly, this croissant looks awesome. That mm. <laughs> is such a delicious croissant with a bunch of tartar spices on the outside. Also, apricot danish. Mm. I think all the baked goods here on this buffet is excellent. There's a lot of fresh fruits, yogurt, smoothies on this buffet, mango yogurt. Oh, that's sour. <laughs> Mango smoothie. Oh, this is delicious. That's a fresh mango smoothie right here. Oh yeah, just light breakfast. More food to come. So this is it, Dubai Expo 2020. This has been delayed for two years. Last time an expo happened was 2015. Uh, basically, this is a world's fair. This is where people from around the world get together to learn about, appreciate, and to explore different cultures. And so far, 17 million people have come to this expo and those who joined online numbered about 178 million. And of course, when you're talking about culture, you can't leave out food. And that's a big reason why I'm here. Let's go grab some lunch. First restaurant, it's in the Vietnamese pavilion, but not a Vietnamese restaurant. This is one of the most highly anticipated restaurants in this expo called Kutir, and it's by Chef Rohit Gai, one of the most celebrated Indian chefs in London. And the word Kutir means a small hut in rural India. So the food here is rural Indian cuisine. Starting out with a couple of lassis, rose and mango. Wow. It's like my taste buds taking a walk through a rose garden. That's so fragrant. Mm. Oh, this is delicious. I think this is one of the best mango lassis I've ever had. It's like fresh mangoes and it goes down so smooth. Mmm. That's delicious. All right, starting out with three appetizers. First up, chicken thigh, garlic pickles, some chutney, sitting on a bit of lentils and onions. Oh, this looks like a juicy chicken thigh. Oh, that is good. First of all, the chicken, so much juice, so incredibly tender. And the chicken itself is already so flavorful. I taste a little citrus on the chicken. Definitely some heat. A little bit of coriander as well. Also beautiful char. Some pieces are nice and crispy on the outside. The chunny brings more depth. The lentils and onions brings more texture. And the prickle garlic. That just brings more awesomeness. Also, 
I can't believe that's an appetizer. This is the prawn masala with coconut and onions on top. This is just fried to golden perfection. Oh, this color is so incredibly enticing. Skin, I know on the outside, it's gonna be nice and crispy already. Just by piercing this with my fork. Oh, just stabbing up. Tell right away. The outer shell is utter perfection. Light little subtle crunch. Mm. Followed by the most tender succulent piece of prime. I mean, this dish is spicy, balanced by the sweetness of the prime, the slight crunch from the onions, and also that subtle sweetness from the coconut. Chase that with a little lassi. Mmm. Final appetizer, alo tiki, crispy potato pancake with mint chutney, honey yogurt, and tamarind sitting on a bit of chickpeas and pomegranate. Mm. This is just like the prime. The outside is utter perfection. I mean, you taste the crunch, but it's so subtle and gentle, yet so significant. Inside, soft potatoes, but the spices, oh, it's just working as magic on my tongue. I mean, I feel the heat on the side. I feel the sweetness on the top. All these dishes, I taste the tradition. I also taste the modern twist that the chef added to them. So far, so good with the appetizers. Can't wait for the main course. Main course is gonna be sea bass mapas. I was able to watch them cook this in the kitchen. And I can tell you, like 10 seconds in, just smelling the ginger and the spices heating up in the pan. Even though I've been eating all day, I felt the drool come out of my mouth. Also, we got some biryani and naan, and the sea bass is seared perfectly. Cooked in coconut milk, lots of ginger spices like coriander, some dried chilies. Wow. I mean, you get the hint of sweetness and definitely the creaminess of the coconut milk. But that sweet and sour flavor from the sauce is what's blowing me away right now. Wow, I need to grab some nun and dig into that. I mean, the heat in the sauce. It's just a few dried chilies, but it is significant. I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of these. Ooh Pop one of these tomatoes just to bring out more of the sweetness and a little more acidity. The main ingredient is the sea bass in this dish. But the star is 100% that sauce. Holy moly, that's good. I mean, all I wanna do is rip up more naan and dip it in here. This thing is fragrant. A ton of ginger. The chili's doing this thing, the coriander doing this thing. And then that basil just highlights the fragrance oh so much. The fish is good, but just give me that sauce and a basket of naan. I'll be really happy. Is there a coffee, Indian ice cream? I haven't had this since I was in India. Little brulee top on this one. And this chocolate fried banana, I think some chilies in here. Well, that is so freaking good. If you never had this ice cream, it's very thick, but oh, so yummy. Fried bananas, are you kidding me? I mean, the smoothest chocolate, which is a tiny bit of kick of heat. Wow. This is just freaking magical. Here, three different flavors of the ice cream. Rose, saffron, and pistachio with some fruits on the side. Mm. This has been such an awesome dining experience. Also, just wanna give a big shout out to everybody at the restaurant, they're so incredibly nice. Food's amazing, this restaurant definitely deserves all the hype.
walk by the Denmark Pavilion, smell this. This is a Royal Dane Burger. It was voted best burger in Denmark in 2020 and 2021. This beef burger cooked sous vide and finished with a duck confit. So I'm expecting something pretty non tender and pretty fatty. <laughs> My mouth is so happy right now, even though I definitely ate a piece of the wrapper. Don't matter, whatever touches this meat will taste absolutely amazing, including paper. I mean, to call this beef tender will be the understatement of the century. This thing just melts. The cheese on top is amazing. The crunch from the purple cabbage is a delight. You can definitely taste the fat in this burger. I mean, this whole thing. melts and then melts some more. And as you continue to chew, the flavor of that fat just renders more and more on your tongue, making this more delicious by the bite. This is a royally good burger. Mm. Also the bun, buttery, is so soft and airy. This is not one of those buns that just kind of breaks up on impact. I can definitely see why this burger was voted the best two years running. Amazing burger. The last thing on the menu today, Lebanese minikish. Got a bit of them. Take some home with me. Um, the most traditional one. This is a very traditional Lebanese um, food item that's eaten a lot of times for breakfast or lunch. And the most traditional one is this. The za'atar, where minikish is, is dough with different toppings on top. It could be cheese, it could be meat. In the instance of uh, za'atar, it's Lebanese thyme with olives, tomatoes, sesame. And what this place does is that they actually import the thyme directly from the mountains of Lebanon. And they roast it here. And that's how they make their minikish. That's another reason why I love this expo. My taste buds are literally traveling around the world while my body stays in Dubai. And this is sometimes rolled up or sometimes cut into uh, pizza type slices. And here, there's also olives and some basil on top. Oh, this is freaking delicious. Mm. The dough's got a nice chew. The thyme and sesame it creates nice, such a nice fragrance in your mouth. And also, whenever the sesame seed pops, this whole thing just becomes more and more aromatic. It's pretty darn addictive. Like, once you start eating it, instinctively reach for the next piece. You know, a piece with a tomato on it, that's even better. Get that nice refreshing sweet pop. Mm. I tried the meat one. Mm. Oh, this is so good. This thing, topped with cheese, meats, love to use the tomatoes. This gives it a, such a sweet little pop. There's hot sauce on the table, so you can add some of that stuff on it if you want. Mm. I might have overdone a little bit. I think this on its own, just meat and tomatoes and cheese. Perfect. Traditional street foods around the world, all in one place. Never been to a, a world fair, never been to a world expo before. I wish this would happen more often in more cities. Such a great way to get a taste of different cultures around the world. I haven't been inside a pavilion yet, just been eating since I got here. So before I leave, definitely take a look. Oh, interesting. So we walk into one of these pavilions. This is the first one I've been to today. It gives you like a kind of a brief overview of the entire country, like agriculture, cultural information, investment opportunities, work opportunities. Honduras has more than nine ethnic groups. Each tribe has their own religion and unique traditions. This is pretty cool.
Now, if that looked like a bean suit just fell from the sky into my bowl, but that's pretty much exactly how it happened. I'd never seen this before. The waiter came over and held the bingsu in his hand and just threw it into the ball. So it's like a bingsu missile. The bottom layer is a layer of chocolate. There's some honeycombs, some cream on top. Homemade brownies inside as well. That's a very chocolatey, delicious bingsu. And my goodness, does this taste good on a day like this. We're walking around outside all day today because Dubai is hot. Thought we were done eating, but then saw a picture of this and had to go for it. And the place we're at right now is a restaurant called Cold Jackie. It's a Japanese Korean fusion place. But today, I just walk around going from Indian food to a royal burger to Lebanese street food to a really cool bingsu dish. It's just so much fun. Again, I never experienced a World Fair before. I never experienced an Expo before. A leveled up Epcot. I do kind of wish that every pavilion like Epcot will, be, will have some little tasting bites so you can just go around and, and try something from each country. Because honestly, after the burger, Kind of good. Again, so fun to walk around and everybody we encounter has been just amazingly nice. And this expo is going to go on for, uh, I think, another month or so. So if we have time, definitely going to spend another day just just walking around trying more food because you could probably go for a week and, and still have so much to see and eat. And as always, thank you all so much for watching until we eat again. See you later.